on the roof. So we got a new cool call uh, for Salon. They got two units, I believe one of them zoned. So I'm thinking it's this one, we'll find out. Um, but basically it's not cooling. Uh, fan is running, but uh, it should be cooling. So we're gonna, and both zones are currently calling. So I'm gonna verify that and make sure this is the right unit. And then we'll go from there. So here we go. Okay, so this is looking like it's our unit. Uh, we have a transformer, so that's gonna be powering the zone control board, which is probably in the space somewhere. Uh, so first things first, we wanna see if we're getting a call for cooling. So we should be getting 24 volts between Y and C. So we're gonna check, and that's gonna be this one and that one. So yes, we are receiving a call, but for some reason it's not turning on. So next things, uh, Next thing we need to check is our refrigerant. Um, it could be a possible low pressure or high pressure switch has been tripped um, because our contactor is not closing and we are not getting any voltage across the contactor. Uh, make sure we got high voltage. Yes, we have high voltage. Nothing there, which is normal. So let's see what's going on. Okay, so I pushed in the contactor sounds terrible and it popped open let's see if I'm getting voltage and I think this contactor is toast okay so all we right. got our contactor all put in uh, we're gonna plug in our disconnect and we're gonna try to manually engage it just to make sure everything's working Ugh. so here we go Is the fan not coming on? So we're gonna go ahead and check our compressor connections and just double check that and we'll go from there. Checking out the run cap, it's supposed to be at 35.5. So compressor side is supposed to be at 35. It is at 32.3 ish or two. Yeah, point three. All right, so that should be enough to get it started. Let's go ahead and check the fan. That's supposed to be at five. So it's fine. So capacitor is good enough. So, and we're just doing, we're checking this because it's a process of elimination because for all we know, these things could be damaged as well. Uh, last thing we want to do is fix something and then find another issue. So we want to check everything. Okay, so we're checking common to run. So this is a carrier unit. So it's gonna be black to yellow and we're getting 1.7. Okay, so we're going to do common to start, which is the blue wire to black. And we're getting 3.2. So 3.2 plus 1.7, 7, uh, seven 8, 9. So that's going to be 4.9-ish. So somewhere around 5-ish. Okay, um, so now we're going to do our start to run, and it should be around 5. Okay, so that's why our fan's not working. We got a little ambient control. Uh, and then I'm ohming it out from the prongs. Uh, directly on the compressor and it's done it's toast so it's bouncing around all crazy so yeah so yeah we got dead windings so we're gonna call it up and we're gonna have to change this compressor so yep but the reason why the fans not working is because of this guy here um, since compressor didn't come on pressure doesn't rise fan doesn't turn on all right well that contactor need to be changed anyway so uh yep we'll be back okay so we're back uh we got our compressor uh believe it or not we're back the next day so i had to haul a little bit up on the roof which was a total pain but anyway we got it all up here uh so first things first is we want to make sure that's not a burnout uh so we're going to do a quick acid test so basically you just take this out if it turns red there's acid if it stays the same color there's no acid if it turns pink there's a little bit and you can usually just put like a treat treat it so anyway um looks like that line dryer has been changed before huh anyway um so we want to use our suction line so let me get this uh, package open and then we'll uh, show you how to do this okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna <clears throat> put this over here and it's gonna depress that trader and it's gonna allow refrigerant to go across the testing surface so um 
you want to do it for about two seconds. Now it says, according to the instructions, you want to do this while it's running, but our compressor's dead, so we can't. So we're going to do this. So. One, two. Okay. And we shall see if it uh, changes color. Now, it should be somewhat, uh, what do you call it? Uh, somewhat instantaneous, but I'm not seeing any color change, so I think we're okay. So no acid, sweet. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up our recovery machine and we're gonna start a, uh, a recovery. And um, I guess the customer decided they wanna reuse their refrigerant because it's R22 and it's super expensive. Um, but the way I see it, should probably just put new fresh refrigerant in there anyway, but you know, now we know at least there's no acid. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go forward with this. So here we go. Okay, so we have our recovery machine and everything all hooked up. Uh, this is an empty tank, so we're weighing in to make sure we have the proper charge. Uh, so I have all the valves open, so just the pressure is recovering. But now it's starting to equalize, so we're gonna go ahead and turn on the pump. And we'll be back once this is done. Okay, so we completed our recovery and we got about five pounds. This thing holds 5.2, so it's pretty good. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and pack this stuff, get the gauges off, hook up the nitrogen, and then we're gonna uh, sweat off those pipes off the compressor, and we're gonna sweat off the uh, line dryer. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, the suction line. We have nitrogen flowing through. Uh, in through here and out through there and then we'll swap them uh, when we get to here just so we have more nitrogen in there and that's to prevent any soot from forming on the inside because we don't want that in the system for the new compressor. So we want to go ahead and try to heat the joint as evenly as possible that way So we got everything set. We're gonna go ahead and braze uh, this guy here and get it on place. We have this uh, discharge or this um, high pressure uh, switch here. So we're gonna wrap that up with some water or some wet rag here just to, doesn't overheat it. So we'll go ahead and start with the bottom because that one's gonna be a little bit harder to braze because we have to fight gravity. And then we'll do the top. Okay, so we wanna heat it up nice and even. Quite a bit of solder here, and we want the pipe to melt the solder, not the other way around. So, all right, cool. I'm going into the top and deal. Now, we already have a lot of solder on there to work with, so we're going to heat her up. And then, okay, so we got everything all done. We're pumping it up with nitrogen, just to make sure there's no leaks. Uh, we know that it had factory charge in it, so there's most likely no leaks. So any leaks at this point is my fault. Yeah, I don't hear any hissing yet. And that's what our braces look like. They're not pretty, but they don't leak. Okay. But yeah, so uh, we're going to pump this up to about 230 PSI and then let her hold for a bit. And then we'll go from there. Alrighty, so we got her under vacuum. We're gonna go to lunch and then we'll be back and hopefully it'll be under uh, 500 microns. Right now we're at 817. It's only been running for, I don't know, a minute or two. But uh, yeah, you know, it'll shoot way down and then it'll, it'll kind of sit there for a while and then take its time. Uh, so anyway, uh, we'll be back. And we are at 225 microns. Let's do a quick little delay test or decay test. Well, it's going down, so no leaks. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of pick up a little bit and then uh, we're going to get set up to charge the refrigerant back in. It takes 5.2 pounds of R22. We're going to reuse what we took out of it. Uh, and I have a tank just in case we need to top it off because we I got five pounds, so I probably won't get the whole five pounds out of it. Uh, I'm going to try though. I'm going to flip it upside down 
and uh, try to get all of it out. But anyway, uh, let's get set up. So we're gonna let it into our liquid side first. Uh, well, it says a discharge, so technically it's not. Uh, but we're still under 500 microns. We've purged all our lines, so we got all the air out. Here we go. We're gonna go ahead and let her in. And we want about 5.2 uh, pounds. So this is a nice feature of this unit. You see this little plug here? That was right here. See how my hoses are coming out? It's because if I have the panel off, it's gonna bypass the coil and just go through there. So they actually put this hole here so I can put my hoses through it. Uh, and then when I'm done, I just plug it up. So that's a nice little feature. So if you ever see those, that's what it's for. Uh, unless you got smart probes, then it doesn't matter. But yeah, this is a nice, I think all of them should have something like this. I uh, ended up charging the two extra pounds. So here's our pressures. We are at 68.5 on our low and 195 on our high. Saturating at 39.5 on our low and 99.9 on our high. Current ambient, it's 80, yeah. So it's currently 80 degrees, so we're right about there. Um, I don't have the clamps on it, I know I should, but uh, we weighed in the charge, we put in exactly 5.2 pounds, so we know it's good. So, let's see what our supply is looking like. So we're at 52.5 on our supply side. And we'll see what our return is, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. So yeah, we're gonna call it a day. We're gonna clean up and get everything down off this roof, which is probably gonna take me two hours. Um, so anyway, that's how we diagnose and change a compressor. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.